What's up? In this video, I'll explain exactly how I created this 3D audio visualizer using the program Blender. I'll show you step by step and you'll leave at the end of the video with a model just like this. But if you want to save some time, you can head to my Patreon and download all of the files on my Patreon. Just follow the link in the video description. Let's get started. So there are two ingredients in this project external to Blender. Our sound that'll be on an MP4 file and the 3D model I've used for this motion capture character, this dancing character. I pay for an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription and therefore I have access to Adobe Mixamo. Adobe Mixamo is an online database of characters and motion capture data. So I go to my characters tab and search man for this basic mannequin. And now I can search animations with this character. So for example, search dancing or running. And I like hip hop dancing, so I'll go ahead and select download. And I'll change my frames per second to 24 since I'll be working with 24 frames per second in Blender. And I'll download the FBX file and then select download. So jumping into my Blender workspace, we can go to file and import our FBX file. Locate it in your downloads and import FBX. So now we've got our geometry that will be our audio visualizer. Let's set up the scene around it. So first I'm going to scale up this cube with S on the keyboard and then tab into edit mode and press three on the keyboard to go into face select. I'll select the top and the front face and press X to delete faces. And then tab back into object mode. Then I'll G to grab and move my cube up. I have a number pad on my keyboard, so I'll press one on the number pad and snap my view to the orthogonal front and place the floor right below the person. And then one more step to get this ready is add a modifier in the modifier stack. Click add modifier and search bevel. Increase the amount and segments. Now we have our backdrop for our scene, but let's illuminate it more with an environment HDRI. So if we go into our render preview mode, expand this list, we can choose a different environment HDRI. I'm going to choose this dark one. Next, I'm going to get that FBX file ready to apply a geometry nodes modifier. First, this FBX file comes with the default material. I'm going to go to my material properties and hit the subtract just to delete that material slot for now and then add a new one. So we're just working with default blender material. In the backdrop material, I'll just take my roughness all the way down to zero and make it a bit darker color. The last step for my backdrop is to right click and shade smooth. There we go. So now you can see that HDRI being reflected in our light bath. All right, so let's start modifying our geometry. I can select the body geometry and go to my modifier stack and add a decimate modifier. We're gonna do this before we start working in geometry nodes. If we go to our wireframe view, you can see this is a fairly high poly model, we want to add that decimate modifier to reduce the number of vertices. So I might take my decimate all the way down to something like 0 0.03 or 0 0.035. We can always tweak this later. So now we're ready to add our geometry nodes modifier. I'm going to right click down on the timeline of my header and create a horizontal split and open up my geometry node editor. So to add in a new geometry node tree, I'm going to shift A and add a basic plane. Now I'll press new on my geometry nodes and I've got that new node network. I've done that because now I can select my armature mesh, that CH36, and I'll be able to click and drag it down into my geometry node setup. First I'll renode that, rename that plane to GeoNodes. And then I'll click and drag CH36 from my outliner down into my geometry nodes workspace. And the first step is changing that from original to relative. Now we can plug in our geometry as the group output. And our character is now our node network. And we can delete the group input. And before we get any further, let's be sure to file save. So now comes the fun part. Let's start adding some nodes to our node tree. Shift A to search for a merge by distance. So this will further decimate our geometry and merge certain points together. Then we want to add a dual mesh node and a split edges. 
And that merge by distance node, I'm gonna to change to 0 0.03 for now. And you can't quite tell what's going on yet, but with the next node, when I shift A for the extrude mesh, now you can see what's happening with this visualizer. But it looks pretty terrible right now. So this is the base concept behind our visualizer. We're just gonna edit how this transformation happens and make, make these mesh islands look a lot more visually attractive. So to give ourselves a lot more control over their appearance, first we'll add a scale elements. We'll add the scale elements before the extrude mesh. Now you control the size of your mesh island. Of course, everything looks better subdivided. Search for subdivision surface and add that after our extrude mesh. So now we have that nice round blob effect. And you can already see those faceted faces, so we can search for a set shade smooth node as well. And that'll live at the end of our node tree. And of course, in geometry nodes, the last node that's always on your tree, set material. So now we can start to make our 3D model react to the music by, of course, using some noise textures. I'll search for a noise texture and first plug my factor through a map range so I can control the values of my noise texture. And I'll plug that result into my offset scale of my extrude mesh. So now by tweaking the values of my map range between zero and one, I can control the range that that noise texture occurs within. And we can change our noise texture over to 4D and you get this W that's basically your phase offset so you can animate the noise texture. So these two nodes will be the first place where audio is driving our mesh. Now to affect the scale of our elements with audio, let's add a random value, utilities, and change that from float to boolean, and then plug the value into our scale of our scale elements. And now we'll shift A for a mix node and plug that result into our boolean because we want to mix two different wave textures through this mix node. So I'll search wave texture and then I'll shift D to duplicate this wave texture below it and plug that into my B slider. So we did all of this work mixing the two wave textures so that we can add more randomness into the animation and make it more visually appealing. So we'll animate both this wave texture and this wave texture to the audio and mix them through this random value. So we've got our geometry set up to be manipulated, and now we need to change the color of each of these islands. And for that, there's a specific node, the mesh island node. So this will read both the island index and the island count. In the index, we want to plug in map range, and that goes into our value of our map range. And then the island count goes into our from max. Now we can plug this map range into a noise texture, yet again, using our noise and plug this factor into that bottom socket in our group output. Now if we select that node and you press N, you can pull up your group panel and you can rename this FAC to Island. It's easier to keep track of. And now you could always change that noise texture from 3D to 4D. And this Mesh Island node is really important because we'll be using this attribute read in our shader editor in a little bit. Speaking of shader editor, right click and create a vertical split in your workspace and change it over to Shader Editor. So now let's read that attribute here. We're gonna create a new material for our geometry node, new, and into our base color, we wanna plug that attribute and we wanna search island. And I'll change over to my material preview. And then Shift A to search for color ramp. And this is how we'll manipulate the colors of our object. So I'll grab this handle and change it to bright color, red. Grab this handle and change it to another bright color, blue. You're not seeing anything yet because over in our geometry nodes modifier, we just need to set that material. So this is material 002. Little error, we don't want to plug it into our color. We want this plugged into our factor. And you can always add a third color socket, select that one and change it to a different color. And I forgot one step we need to add in our geometry nodes output attributes a name for the, the attribute. So I'll just make that name Island. Now you can see when you drag around those handles in that color ramp, you're actually changing specific islands on the mesh and their color. So we could choose a range of good colors that we want for these handles. So 
So now we've gotten to the part of our project where we bring our mp4 file and we start animating this geometry to the music. If you watch some of the other music videos on my channel, you might realize that I have some unique high quality audio that you might not have heard from other sources. And that's because I download music from Artlist. So I pay for a monthly subscription where I can download a bunch of music and I get a royalty free license to use it here on my YouTube account. Because I pay for my Artlist, I have a friend referral link and I'm offering that up to you in the video description below. If you sign up for Artlist using my friend referral link, you'll get two free months alongside your subscription. And that also awards me two free months to my subscription as well. So it helps us both. One of the reasons I like Artlist is that I can sort by recent and they upload a lot of new items. So I can sort by newest and I find a lot of new music that's been uploaded on a daily basis. And it's really fun to be able to sort by genre, sort by video theme, etc. When I have a concept for one of my 3D audio visualizers, this makes it really easy to be able to specifically find the kind of music that I want to pair with this visual representation. So just like all the other music videos on my channel, I'm going to add here in Blender a file that I've downloaded from Artlist. I'm going to right click on the header and create a vertical split up in my viewport and change this over to my video sequencer. Now I'm going to make sure I'm at my zero frame all the way at the beginning, zero. And up in my video sequencer, I'm going to add a sound. So I'll choose that song file that I downloaded from Artlist. And I can see that that sound strip is 3,382 frames. So I'll change that to the length of my animation. So now we can see in our timeline down below the full length of our animation and it matches our song. So this is how long we'll need to animate our geometry for. For an additional look into your audio file within Blender, you can press N in the video sequencer to expand the side panel and check display waveform. So then it'll show that waveform of the audio in your video sequencer, but we don't need that for this tutorial. I'm going to close out my video sequencer and bring in my graph editor. So this graph editor is where we'll be animating each of our geometry nodes and the specific values that they affect in our geometry. So as soon as you have this long animation over a thousand frames, you might realize that your animation from Adobe Mixamo really is not all that long. When I select the armature, it's only about 400 frames long. So a trick, a quick way to solve this is to select the armature and down in your timeline, hover over it, press shift E and you can make cyclic. So now you can see in our graph editor, we've repeated all of these actions throughout time forever. So this character will just keep dancing in a looped dancing animation throughout our entire animation, no matter how long it is. So let's click back on our geometry node and start bringing in audio to each of our values. So for each of our wave textures, I'm going to bring the scale down to something like 0.5 and a lot smaller, something like 0.1. Then in our wave textures, we're going to be animating the phase offset to the audio. So I'll hover over phase offset with this node selected and press I on my keyboard. So you can see we've inserted that keyframe up in our graph editor. That value stays constant at 12.4. So the next step is to change this F curve with audio. We'll have this F curve selected and go to channel, sound to samples, and locate your same audio file that you imported before. And here, before you click sound to samples, you can change the frequency range that you're selecting out of your audio. If we only want something like bass or sub bass, let's only go from zero to 50 hertz and then reduce our attack time all the way and sound to samples. So now you can see in our graph editor that that F curve is affected by our bass in our song. And we can modify this F curve with the modifiers, add an envelope. And if we add a control point and drag these values up or down, so when you start to mess with those maximum and minimum values, you'll see how that F curve is affecting the geometry visually. Do the same with this wave texture on the bottom. We'll select that node, hover over phase offset, press I. And this time when I go channel sound to samples, I'll select a different audio range. I might go from 60 Hertz to 100 and sound to samples. So this is a slightly different audio range that will be affecting this wave texture down here. And again, I'll add modifier, envelope modifier. 
Alternatively, you could select this wave texture node and you can click this little copy button, copy modifier. And then we can go down here to our wave texture and paste modifier. And that saved us a few clicks with our envelope. It already has our control point added and now we can mess with the control point value as needed. So this is the first time that you can test your animation and see what the audio looks like as it's affecting your geometry nodes. It doesn't look that great yet, but it should look a little bit cooler all said and done. Now let's go over to our extrude mesh and that noise texture. And let's keyframe the W on this noise texture. Make sure we're at our first keyframe, hover over the W with that node selected and press I. Then let's go up to that keyframe, channel, sound to samples. For this audio range, I'll go from 200 to 500 hertz. So you can see it's reacting to a different audio range. And again, I'm gonna click paste F modifier and it pastes that envelope for us so that it can click a few less times. So we have that audio affecting our noise texture and we can further control it with our map range. If we bring that map range in or out, go to one of the spots in our song where the value is absolutely to the max in our graph editor, and then make sure that it still fits within your visual representation that you're going for. Go to one of the minimum areas, see if it still looks okay. So this map range is a way for you to add finite control and make this look more visually appealing. And to get closer what the final product will look like, we can turn off the original mesh that's showing in both the viewport and the render with that eyeball in the camera. So now we're only looking at our geometry nodes modifier and spend a little time changing how the elements are scaled with these two wave textures. Change your scale, change your distortion, etc. until you find something that looks visually appealing to you. Remember to save your file. Now I want to get my scene ready to render, so I'll shift A to add a camera, and then press zero on my number pad to snap my view to the camera, and then N on the keyboard to select camera to view. So now when I scroll with my mouse and move around with my mouse, the camera is locked to my view. So once you've got your camera in a location you like, you can select the camera and set the depth of field. Focus on that object. So you can see when you draw in that f-stop, it makes that focus stronger in the background. And you can go over to your output properties and change the resolution of your final image. I usually set my resolution as 3840 by 2160. This will output a 4K image. And then you can change your output properties, the file where you'll save your animation. And give it a name. You want to output an MP4 file. So you want to change your file form band over to FFmpeg video, and then change a few settings in your encoding. First, your container, change it over to MPEG4, so this will output your MP4 file, and then change your output quality to perceptually lossless. And you want to include the audio with this animation, so we'll include the AAC audio codec, and that's the last output setting that you'll need to include. Then you can set your render properties as you like. Use either the EV or Cycles render engine. And with each of those, you'll have a different motion blur, but I recommend you enable motion blur as it'll add a little bit more realism into the animation. Once you've got all your settings ready to go, you can go to render and render animation. All right, that's all you need to know to recreate this effect. What you see here is exactly what I used to create my music video on my channel. I've just added different dance moves and different colors, but this, in essence, is exactly what I did to create that music video. Now you can create the same. If you want to find some inspiration, be sure to visit my Patreon and download a few Blend files, see what other things I've created in the past. See ya!